Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, my name is Nar and welcome back to another live stream on my channel Play Lion Chess. I'm super hyped today and um, I'll tell you why. I've got a lot of different reasons to be really excited um, and I'll get right into it. So um, first of all, uh, for those of you who haven't yet seen my first few videos, um, I am a chess streamer focused on improving at the game and sharing my training techniques with all of you. Um, in the past few sessions, I've focused on a couple different techniques. I've basically uh, taken a trip around all of the different training techniques I, I use. Um, and I started off with the blitz training session, and then I did a chess 960 session where uh, I really focused on piece play and uh, formulating plans and positions. And in the last session, I did a tactic session. Um, today, I'm going to be focused on something brand new, and I'm really excited to be sharing it with you. Um, it is one of the techniques that I use to get better at openings, um, which is a part of my game that I focus a lot on. Um, so today, I will be sharing that technique with you, and I'm pretty excited to get that started. Um, the second really, really, th ex uh, the, the other thing that I'm really excited about today is that I will be uh, using for the first time some sick equipment. I had uh, a microphone and a webcam come in a, a couple days ago, and I'm pretty excited to be uh, for the first time using them on my stream. So uh, hopefully the quality of the stream is going to be epic. And um, y'all can definitely let me know in the chat if you experience any issues with my uh, setup um, with my mic and my webcam. So definitely do let me know in the chat how, how everything is. Um, cool. And the third thing I'm definitely super excited about right now is all the sports that are going on out there. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff that's been going on recently in the sports world. And uh, definitely a lot of it is stuff that I'm pretty happy about. Um, my team's kind of doing really, really well uh, out there right now. So definitely excited to talk to you guys more about uh, sports over the course of my stream. Uh, but with all that said, let's get right to our main content for today. Um, we're going to be focused, like I said, on opening training. And I have several different uh, techniques that I use to get better at openings. Um, some are focused on the breadth of openings, uh, basically making yourself into a well-rounded chess player that focuses on uh, not just one opening, but you're really kind of like a Swiss army knife and you can uh, basically be placed in any opening and do well. That's one type of training that I do. And the other type is um, you can think of it as more of depth training where I'm really emphasizing specific parts of my opening repertoire so that I'm um, going to be uh, focusing in on those and getting really good at those. So today I'll be focusing on the first part of it, the breadth aspect, not the depth aspect. And I think in general over my channel, I'll be focusing more on the breadth side of things, specifically because um, one of the primary intended goals of this channel is to uh, help myself get better. And I feel that I would be counterproductive if I showed you all of the little pieces of my opening uh, theory, uh, essentially making it really easy to target me and uh, essentially knowing exactly what variations of which openings I'm going to be playing. So I will definitely give you guys taste of what I'm going to be doing there. There's a lot of work that goes into the depth side of things and really like uh, ironing out the wrinkles in the repertoire. Um, but I will get into those um, uh, yeah, as well. And I'll probably make some tutorial videos and stuff like how to's on YouTube. Um, with that said, let's get started. Yeah, I'm super excited for uh, for this setup. Thanks for the shout out in the chat, Snoozy Singh. Um, really, really excited. So please, again, I, I can't stress this enough. Let me know how uh, how it is on your end. I definitely hope that the quality on the stream is going to be like through the route, uh, through the roof, and just you know phenomenal. But um, in general, like I just I really love like shiny new things, and um, especially these uh, <laughs> these two things that came in um, the the mail a couple days ago. This Blue Yeti microphone, um, which you can take a look at right here, um, it's just really pleasing to look at. And I also got this Logitech uh, webcam. Obviously, have no affiliation with either of these, but um, pretty happy with uh, with the setup so far. So let me know. Um, okay, so mic sounds kind of muffled. Um, it, does this help at all? I brought it a little bit closer to me. Uh, let me know how it is. Okay, um, yeah, I'm not hearing anything in the chat, so I'm going to get started with my session, and I'm going to just uh, first cue up the music, because I love to have some music going on in the background. Uh, this time around, I'm going to play some instrumental only music but i'm going to be using once again um, this software called pretzel rocks that gives you a bunch of license free music that you can play on your stream so let's go right to it um and let's pick some some genre uh, how about we go hype still sounds the same but not too bad okay um yeah sorry i guess we're gonna have to 
maybe live with it for now please let me know yeah continue to let me know if it sounds really bad i'll uh next next time i come around to like a break a natural breaking point in uh, my training i will definitely try to address it if it's still uh if it's still an issue for you so thanks for thanks for letting me know and please keep letting me know in the chat how uh, my setup is um but okay let's get started let's play some music how's this hype uh, hopefully it's not too hype and doesn't overpower me. Let me know if you can't hear me over this. So far it sounds pretty mellow. I'm not sure what all the hype is about uh, in the hype playlist, but let's get right to it. So I have two windows open here. This is a, a dual setup going on. Um, in this one, I have the actual trainer. Uh, so this is what I'll be using for today's purposes uh, for the breath uh, aspect of my opening training. And over here, I will have the actual analysis board. Let me just turn down the music a little bit um, just to err on the side of having it lower okay so yeah do let me know if you can hear it or if you can't hear it can't hear me uh yeah you know the drill okay so let's get right to it over here i have the analysis board um the tool that i'm using uh will require me to go through a second pass on the opening that i'm studying and just go into it a little bit deeper so without uh laboring you with the details right now let's get right to it um so what i'm going to be doing is this chess opening trainer on 365chess.com it's a great tool for you if you uh, want to give it a look. And essentially what it is, is it throws you a random position arising out of openings. And you can specify um, how deep uh, you want the opening preparation to go, like whether you want it to be limited to just openings that are 10 moves deep or 15 moves deep. Right now, I just have it set to random, so it could give me really any opening. I think it might have some baseline for how many times a position has to be seen for it to throw it at me. But as you can tell, it's a pretty cool tool. It just gives me a random position and I'll uh, basically be forced to put myself in situations that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Cannot hear the music. Um, okay, let's try to fix that. Is it is it that you can't hear it at all or is it that's too quiet? Ah, okay, so it's too quiet. Okay, perfect. Easy to fix. Yeah, let me know if it's overpowering or whatever, um, but let's get right to it. So um, here we have a position. Uh, this is my first position of the day. And as we can tell, it's coming out of Sicilian and it's black to play based off of which side of the board we're looking at. Uh, for now, I'm not going to look at all the moves, but I'll just note that it's uh, in the Labradine Lorventhal variation, which I have no idea what that is right now, but that's what this is for later. We can uh, take a second pass through it once we analyze it. So right now I see that it's my move, and the last move that he's played is E takes D5, so takes right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just like kind of walk through all the different candidate moves that I have in mind, um, and then we can uh, try to pick one and see whether it's right. I should say that being right here means that um, you you guess the most popular move in the position. Uh, not that you necessarily play the best move or anything, but just that you play a move that is the most popular. Okay, so here we have uh, e takes d5. Most natural is to win a pawn here, I think, uh, to take here. Uh, take with the knight as well. It's, it's a pawn that's just sitting there, uh, and there's a lot of tension going on here. But also I would see as a natural move to just get on with development, play bishop e7, allow them to take... And then you take here, and if they trade a bunch, it feels almost like some sort of Benko Gambit position where you've maybe given up a pawn here, but who really cares? You've gotten both of the files right here for your pieces, and you also can get uh, get on with development. I'll also note that I have six pawns to uh, white's seven at the moment, so I am down a pawn, which is why I was initially inclined to try to win this, but let, let me just go ahead and say that the most common move I feel like is going to be bishop e7 just to get us castled. Cool, we got it right. Uh, I'm gonna do some post editing in this uh, video when I post it on, on YouTube and stuff. So uh, I'll tell you what my record is so you can keep track at home if, uh, if you want to. And definitely do try to give all these puzzles a shot yourself, yeah? I see we have a lot of, a lot of users on the live stream right now. So welcome to all of y'all. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about what I'm about or what I'm trying to do today. And uh, also let me know if you guys are able to keep up and try these uh, for yourself back home. Cool, so let's take a look at this opening. So we have all the moves right here. So I'm just gonna pull it up on this second board right here. And we got e4, c5, 
Knight f3, sorry, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes, knight takes, and e5. Okay, this is signaling that we might be ready to go for um, one of these setups where, uh, you know, kind of like this, and then um, something like this. All of this is pretty common. And I believe this is called the Sveshnikov. It's a pretty popular opening, especially at the high level. Um, but of course, this is not at all what we're talking about here. It goes down a, a different route with... Uh, okay, so we're still with this right here. Um, all of this is seen in the game that we are analyzing. Knight a3, b5, knight d5. So this is a, a slightly different uh, move order than we saw previously and gives black the option of playing knight here, which in the previous variation was different because the knight went to here. Um, so let's get on with it. C4, knight d4. This is the most common move in the position. You can check right here. There's 368 games and black is doing very nicely here because 37% of the games they win and 34% white wins. So let's go on with it. Knight d4. What else we got? We got c takes and knight takes d5. So takes here and e takes. And then here, let's just take a look quickly at what are the options here. Bishop e7. Strikes me as strange that bishop d7 is, is a high up move on this list. Um, because it seems like we're just giving up this a pawn for free. So um, let's just maybe take a quick look at what's going on here. What happens if white takes the pawn? Uh, okay, so there's some check here. And if black just, or sorry, if white just blocks it, then what do we do? Uh, okay, we're winning this pawn right here. Okay, so this is a bit unnatural. It seems slightly strange that we would develop here. Queen seems very loose in the center, but on the bright side, we do have pressure here on this g2 pawn, and white cannot develop so actively. Um, so, so okay, yeah, this is interesting. Let's look at the main line real quick. Uh, e takes, bishop e7, what else do we have here? Bishop d3 getting on with development themselves, castles, and I would think black wants to play for something like king h8, f5, and start pushing this f pawn making him a bother and saying, okay, I don't really mind about this pawn that I've lost over here. So let's just take a quick look at a couple more moves. F5, yep, exactly. Takes here and continue to push. Okay, this is as far as, far as I'll go. I don't need to become an expert on Labyrinthine, whatever or not variation, um, but cool. Yeah, let me know. This is my first one and uh, hopefully this gives you a flavor for what we're going to be doing in this training technique. Cool, so let's get on to the next one. Yeah, definitely thought that was an interesting one, um, Snoozy. And uh, Sicilian is one of those openings that's super rich. Okay, let me turn up the music just a little bit more. Okay, uh, I did turn it up a little bit and hopefully that's good. Hopefully it's better. Hopefully you can hear both me and the music well. So let's reset this guy for the next one. And let's take a look here. Again, we're black in this position. And it's coming out of an Anglo-Dutch. So that means that we went for the Dutch opening with this f5 pawn move. But white, uh, you know, normally this f5, f5 move comes out of the d4 setup with um, like a d4 opening, queen's pawn. But here it's coming out of an English opening with c4. So slightly different. f5, very, very committal, very big decision early on. But okay, let's just keep going. Knight f3, knight f6, and g3. So I would think that Common moves here are e6, just getting ready to develop this bishop, perhaps g6, perhaps knight c6. g6 seems extremely committal. We're creating a lot of dark square weaknesses, so I would think that more natural would be e6, just ready to get this out. Knight c6 also seems reasonable. Uh, d6 perhaps also, just to try to get an e5. But yeah, in my mind, the most natural thing here is to play e6 and try to get this bishop developed so you can get on with life. Let's take a look. Okay, so I was wrong with my intuition here. E6 is commonly played, uh, but not the most common move. So, okay, we learned something. And that's what this is about, just learning a little bit every time. C4, F5, Knight F3, Knight F6. Great, great. Super glad that it sounds good. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Sounds good. We're ready to rock and roll then. Um, G3, most common move here. Makes sense, yeah? You just kind of get ready to fianchetto this bishop and turn him into a monster along this diagonal. It's hard to kind of get the right setup to 
to blunt that bishop because we've already committed to f5, so it uh, kind of makes sense. Okay, so here g6 is most common. What about, um, what would the variation look with g6? Let's just take a look. Bishop g2, of course, naturally just, uh, you, if you say a, you say b, and you just continue with the plan. Bishop g7, I would guess castles, yep, castles, and castles again. And I'll maybe go a couple more moves just to see what's what's up. Knight c3. And okay, here it is. This d6, keeping everything flexible and playing for this e5 break. So I would guess that white would want to blunt it. Yes, with d4. And now this plan doesn't work because we just lose a pawn. But then we can get on with maybe, ah, okay, some interesting plans like c6. Also knight c6 here. Or queen e8 is very, very striking to me. Uh, really, really making our intentions clear that we want to play e5. It looks like a very, very subtle move here, queen e8, but with this plan in mind, it doesn't seem like white really can uh, do anything about it. If they try to go bishop f4 to prevent it more, I think we can even try something like knight h5 and really ask this bishop, what did you achieve by coming to the square where you can be captured, and uh, are you really willing to give yourself up for a knight so early on? Which is, you know, something you have to be very careful about. Okay, so, cool, I, I learned something here. g3, g6 was uh, not as bad as I thought. Okay, cool. This is the Anglo-Dutch position. Cool. <laughs> this is really funny. We have an English position, but this time we're on the white side of the board. Um, I swear this is totally random. Like, I guess it is. Um, but yeah, somehow we just happened to get an English position. So let's flip this guy and let's get right to it. Knight f3, knight f6. So a little bit of a KG start, you're not playing C4, you're not committing to it yet. There's other approaches you can go with, like E3, B3, D4, a um, lot of options. Knight F3, Knight F6, C4, G6, Knight C3, Bishop G7, G3, and Castles. Okay, to me this one seems... I would be shocked if I got this wrong, because we have just last played G3. And if the, if the most natural move here is not the right move, then I would be... yeah, I'd basically think I have no understanding of chess like I'm not even sure there's any other move that really makes sense maybe d4 makes sense but why would you commit to it when you have to play bishop g2 in castles after playing this g3 move so yeah I would guess this in a heartbeat and let's see if it's right okay yeah it's by far the most common move and surprisingly d4 is also kind of up there um and it, it gets pretty good results apparently it's very uh a position that's less likely to lead to a draw than this bishop g2 line I could see why bishop d2 maybe leads to some draws because it's extremely symmetrical, right? If you look at what black has done and what white has done, so similar. They look very similar setups, so it's going to be hard for either side to really prove the value of their setup over the opponent's because, well, you're playing the same setup as your opponent. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those copycat situations where you can probably copycat for more moves and it'll be okay. Okay, so castles and bishop g2. Let's just play it out for a few more moves to see what would happen. d6. Makes sense. You want to get these guys involved, this bishop. Uh, also preparing e5 brick. So castle is most common here. Although d4 has a slightly better uh, performance, as you can tell here. Uh, it's doing slightly better for white and slightly worse for black. Because maybe it's fighting against this e5 plan. So if castles, I would guess e5 hits. Yep, e5. And what else do we have? D3. Okay, this is super, super symmetrical. The only difference is black has not gone with this pawn and has instead gone with this pawn. But proving something here, it is it is going to be hard. And all three results equally likely. So, okay. That's that. Let's go on to another one. Uh, hopefully not another English. I used to play the English opening with C4 for maybe like four or five years of my life. And I think I got so bored of it after some point because uh, it leads to very dry positions and that's part of the thing about opening theory you want to get positions that suit your style and over time i became maybe a little less patient and a little bit more like i don't know rambunctious and i wanted positions that uh suit tactical play and this is uh definitely not one of them at least right out of the opening it, it leads to very positional and strategic play so let's get one and let's see what it is okay um, cool, we got something that has a lot of flavor in the position. First thing that I'm immediately drawn to is this weird pawn structure. We have doubled pawns over here. And, um, yeah, and as for the actual position of all the minor pieces, uh, black has already given up their dark square bishop. 
uh, for a knight. And so that's kind of interesting dynamic. I love that this knight right here is boxed out by my pawn. This pawn is like a, um, a, a fabulous defender. He's just cutting the knight out of all these squares and uh, ideally placed. So I would think that maybe a plan for black is to try to reposition it. But it's not that easy. Knight e7 runs into something like bishop f6. And the pawn structure over here is damaged. Double pawns uh, on the f file exposing this king uh, is not something that you want. But okay, for now it's, it's our move came out of uh, e4, e5 opening. Um, okay, so we'll give that a look in a second. Um, but for now, let's get right to this position here. Our bishop is being attacked, so the moves that we would consider are moves that save the bishop or uh, make a trade. So one plan is to take this, and after queen takes, maybe to try to double this guy's pawns over here. But I'm not sure we're really playing for anything at that point. It seems, uh, mm, it seems like black would have the trump trumps with uh the bishop for the knight but okay so that's one idea let's not get rid of it immediately bishop h4 also a plan bishop e3 maybe runs into knight g4 so i don't see the the beauty in that move bishop d2 is a possibility bishop c1 seems kind of crazy you're coming all the way back to your starting square uh doesn't really strike me as a movie play so i'm basically thinking about bishop d2 or bishop h4 and I would think maybe more likely to go bishop h4. It just seems like it's nice to keep the pressure here and fight against black's plan to play knight e7 to knight g6 to f4. This is the square that black really wants this knight to go because right now he's bad. So bishop h4 it is. And something like g5, we're not worried about. We can just back up. Maybe even take with the knight and this pin right here on this diagonal is pretty annoying. So, okay, let's play it. Okay, most common move, for sure. Surprisingly, bishop c1 is the second most. I don't know, really know what that's about, but um, we could take a look in the uh, in the analysis. Okay, so we got e4, e5. Coming out of a pretty dry opening, actually, this four knights symmetrical variation is usually kind of boring. Um, but with bishop b5, it's slightly more interesting than this one. This one actually gets to be super drawish. It's called the scotch four knights. Something I have familiarity in tournament chess, it's uh, one of the most annoying things to face because it's just so utterly boring uh, in many of the lines. But okay, bishop e5, bishop e4, like super, super symmetrical. Castles, castles, d3, d6. Okay, who's going to budge and play a different move than the opponent first? Bishop g5, and here it is, the deviation. What happens if uh, you try to do copycat? Let's just see. Okay, this is very annoying right here, this pin, and you might even be losing. Um, so yeah, you can't just copycat your opponent forever, and at some point you gotta deviate apparently, so here it is. Uh, thanks for the, the comment in the chat, for the nice analysis. Yeah, I, I do feel that um, these positions are so different, and I, I think like, just gives you like a change of scenery, right? You get to look at a different position every couple minutes, I think it's pretty cool. Welcome in to all of y'all who are watching uh, on the live stream on Twitch. We are doing our fourth session here on uh, my channel Play Lion Chess. I've done all kinds of training. I've done um, Blitz, Chess 960 uh, tactics in the past. And today I'm going to be doing opening training, which is something I really, really focus on a lot because I think it dictates so much of uh, the direction of the game. But yeah, welcome in and let me know in the chat if you have any questions, if you are able to keep up uh, with this at home. If you have your own ways that you study opening, please, please, please do share it with me. I want to I wanna make this a community where we can all feed off of each other's energy and uh, try to improve at the game together. So cool. Let's get right to the next one. I think uh, for those keeping track at home, I'm two and one, but uh, don't quote me on it. I could be wrong very easily. Okay, another Sicilian. Cool, I love Sicilians. Uh, fighting chess at its best. And not some standard Sicilian either. It looks kind of confrontational with this D-pawn here. Yeah, I can see why they call this music the hype playlist. It's pretty like up in your face, like uh, like super like rock, you know, like a electric guitar type situation. But okay, yeah, it suits the position, I guess. This position is one that feels like uh, this would be the background score to this position. Okay, so we have a normal kind of Sicilian with some d5 early break and 
let's just get right to the current position. Materially, we have traded one pawn, and everything else I think is still left on the board. Um, right now, there's immediately a question here on the conflict. That is what I'm first drawn to. Candidate moves here, it would maybe be knight takes. Knight, so that when he takes back, I can play e5, and then f4, fortifying my pawn. Uh, also, to maybe uh, think about captures here, so that... Uh, we can release the tension and never worry about our pawn structure being damaged. Uh, what else? There's not really a lot else that screams to me. E5, of course, runs into knight takes. Um, so, I have to find something else. If every position had a music score, you know, it's pretty sick. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely, like, it would be pretty cool if there was, like, an app where you're playing on, uh, maybe, like, Lee Chess, say, and as the position changes, the dynamic of the position determines what kind of music is going on in the background. So if anyone is uh, looking for a hot new startup to, to go build something for, um, sounds sick. Hit me up, I can uh, handle the business side. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so let's get to this. Um, oh, speaking of music scores and uh, chess positions, there was... A, a, an article written by this guy Jeremy Silman. He designed the position for the Harry Potter movie. If you remember in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, uh, they had to solve a chess position with actual giant chess pieces uh, in order to get to like the actual Sorcerer's Stone. Hopefully I'm not spoiling anything. Um, <laughs> maybe I realize I am, but uh, if you haven't watched Harry Potter in 2020, like that's on you for not doing that yet. Um, so yeah, go out and watch it. It's, it's a must watch, part of everyone's childhood. But okay. Anyway, he he designed the position for this uh for this game, and I guess there's like all this fancy music going on. But then he was like really upset because they like they they Hollywooded it like really hard. Um, basically just took out all of the actual chess in the position and just turned it into some sort of like I don't know like Hollywood experience where it's you know you gloss over all the details. And it's, if you look at the actual position, there's so much going on. It's a really really cool dynamic. But a lot of it is lost in uh, the glamorization of it. But, okay. Glad you think this is a cool way to study openings, for sure. I definitely, yeah, I, I, I stumbled on this like maybe a couple weeks ago. It's, it's a site called 365chess.com. And uh, you can sign up for free and train on here however long you want. Um, yeah, it, it's really cool. Because at the end of this, if you're like given any position out of the opening and you're able to pick the best move, like... That's a skill. That's like a superpower, yeah? If you're able to do that, um, come find me and I can help you train for uh, your world championship match. Okay, um, so here we have a position again with the confrontation and I would guess takes or knight takes here. Maybe bishop develops. Um, yeah, let's see. Mm, I'm gonna go with... Okay, if I take, he can take back and his bishop is helped. Not exactly what I had in mind. If I take here, take here, my rook opens up, but I do have this e5 break. Mm, it's tough, it's tough. I'm at a loss, not exactly sure what the right move here is. g4 is something. If he takes, I can take with the knight, and then maybe I have some attack. Uh, I'm gonna go with knight takes. Oh, I was way off. Horrible move, apparently. So... Yeah, this is why I've never played this, and this is why I'm studying it here, as opposed to seeing this position for the first time in an actual chess game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you uh, if you haven't seen the the Sorcerer Stone chess position, you can go back and watch it. Um, there's some like actual dynamics to the position, and it like fits into the storyline about how like I won't spoil it, but like there's a reason like someone has to do something in order for someone else to do something else, and the position is literally geared towards the exact storyline that has to happen and transpire, so check it out, yeah. Okay, this position is um, some Sicilian, so e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes, knight takes, yeah, this is a classical Sicilian, no, sorry, not the classical Sicilian, that's an opening, but this is like a traditional Sicilian called Open Sicilian, and there's still a few different directions this could go. Um, so here, okay, now we actually do get to what's called the classical Sicilian, knight c6. Um, this is a, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty sharp opening, can get really crazy really fast. Um, let's get on with it, f3. 
Uh, I know that this is not the most common move in the position. Bishop g5 is, and it's the most testing. But on f3, I think e5 is common. e6 is also common. Yep. Um, okay, e6 it is in this game. Bishop e3. Bishop e7. All of this seems pretty natural. And then somewhere along the line here, queen d2 makes sense. Okay, you want to castle queen side and start some quick g4, h4, h5, g5, and checkmate black over there, yeah, before he even knows what happened. Um, set up the pieces for the next game and just destroy this guy. But he's not obviously not going to allow it. Castles, castles, and he gets his own counterplay quickly with d5. That is the second most common move in the position. a6 is more common. But for the purpose here, let's go d5. And let's see what, what's up. Okay, so the most common move is e takes. First, there must be something horribly wrong with our move if uh, it's not at all played. And what is it? Um, I don't even see analysis coming here. But yeah, my guess is... Okay, here it is. B takes C6 and it's not horrible for me, but you've opened up this file and what do you have to show for it? Really nothing. You're just going to start an attack against your own king. Not what you want. Okay, so shame on me for, for making this mistake, but okay, E takes. Um... Knight takes common. I was thinking maybe e takes is common as well. But I guess g4 and look at this bishop. This bishop that opened its eyes still has nowhere to go. Um, like aggressively. So, okay. That's cool. Knight takes. We got knight takes. And I guess queen takes. Yep. Maybe knight b3 to drop back. And basically right now this pawn is uh, unprotected. You don't want to allow it to be captured because not only then but uh, are you losing it but then you're also have this checkmate threat on a1 so yeah don't do that definitely don't do that um c4 here is common okay that's about as as far as i'll go maybe a couple more moves queen d6 and something like king b1 is common or knight takes c6 just to simplify the position a little bit and okay this is as far as i'll go seems interesting and definitely seems justified if black has to capture this way as opposed to this way um yeah i can i can definitely see the, the merits of this uh, move e takes d5 okay cool uh that's that let's bad xd reflect get bonked uh sorry i don't know what that means Um, yeah, if it's some sort of like specific lingo on uh, on here, I, I'm not sure I understand. Also, I'm not sure if that's like a if that's an admin or uh, yeah, I'm not sure. If you could just clarify what you mean by that, that would be great. But um, cool. Here we go in the next one. We got a Rui Lopez open variation. Some uh, some more sh sharp stuff. And yeah, this is a pretty crazy opening because black creates a lot of light square weaknesses, but it's all tactical right now and everything is justified with the tactical uh, tactical point. So let's get to this position. Right now I'm down, I think, a pawn. So I have seven pawns and they have eight. No, they have seven as well. Okay. Um, so not done a pawn. There's tension right here. Some catchy music. Um, okay, so there's a uh, no pawn deficit. Uh, both of us have two knights and a bishop. Same bishop, same color bishop. Two rooks as well, a queen. Okay, we're not going to be down a queen or anything in this opening. So, yeah, not expecting anything like that. Okay, here we go. Uh, maybe takes here. I would be worried if they take and my pawn structure is like utterly destroyed. Other moves that come to mind, knight e4. Uh, so that if he takes here, I can capture. But he could also push and then maybe have to deal with a pass pawn. That's not fun. For sure, not fun. A4 to kind of just ask questions here and maybe try to break up this side of the board. Very common in Rula passes to break out with an A4. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I can't see anything that doesn't resolve this tension as desirable. So I would think takes or mm, maybe like queen c2. Then if he takes, I take. It's hard, yeah. I don't, I don't see anything great other than those two. Uh, knight e4 takes queen c2. Yeah, a4 I'm not so drawn to because he can just take here and 
What am I really accomplishing? What we got here? Um, yeah, I'm at a loss. Queen c2 perhaps? Seems reasonable if he takes, then I take. D3 could be a nuisance, but maybe we live with it? Nah, it can't be that, right? It's gotta be captures, and if he takes, takes, trade a bunch, and then live? Let's try it. Okay, cool. Got one right, bounce back. Um, let's take a quick look at this opening, e4, how it came out uh, of the opening. Knight f3, knight c6. Okay, uh, Rui Lopez, which is calcified by this move, bishop b5. a6, bishop a4. Knight f6. Thanks for the encouragement, yeah? This is, uh, I needed it after that last one. I got it wrong, right? And not only did I get it wrong, I played a move that was never played. Um, sometimes that's good. It's like a novelty. Yeah, it's brilliant. But in my case, I think it was just, yeah, stupid. Like, not a good move. But okay, knight takes. This is the open Rue Lopez. Leads to some uh, more fighting chess and more dynamic play than classical Rue Lopez, like bishop e7 is common. Um, that leads to the classical lines, which is like a lot of maneuvering, but something to keep in mind. I've had a couple outings with this open Ray Lopez against some like really strong players. I think I played against uh, 2650 rated guy, uh, like some middle schooler who's like 2650 and he just like, yeah, like utterly destroyed me in this opening. So I've been scared and traumatized since, but okay, bishop b3, d5. This is all main line of this opening. D takes bishop e6 and then here I think the main moves are c3 or knight d2 yeah but in this game what do we do uh, okay knight b2 d2 and black plays knight c5 most common move c3 and a couple moves here uh, bishop e7 and d4 both common but here we go d4 and takes here knight takes we would not want to double like ruin our pawn structure here and get uh, utterly destroyed, yeah, over there. Let's stick with the knight, keep everything under control, and then most common here is he takes. And let's just take a quick look what would happen. Welcome in, by the way, if you're uh, just checking me out. Uh, I'm a chess player focused on improvement, and today I've got a, a sick opening drill going on, uh, focused on uh, building breadth uh, in openings. Basically, like trying to expand my knowledge to openings that I have no familiarity with. And literally, this thing just gives me a random opening and I try to play it and see how I do. Uh, mixed results so far, but uh, learning a lot for sure. And after knight takes, uh, we can either play knight e4, that would be a normal move. Just trying to jump with this knight somewhere, I think that's cool. a4 also, now that we don't have any pawn structure deformities in consideration, let's maybe get started cracking away at this queen side structure. So, okay, I'll go as far as maybe a couple more moves after a4. Yep, get ready to castle and takes, takes, 94, okay, and I lied, two more moves, okay, takes, knight takes, okay, this is as far as I'll go and I'll say, this position, there's not a lot of pieces left on the board, but I, I like White's chances because he's well developed, his pieces feel like they're in better squares than all of Black's counterparts. Uh, this rook is active, whereas this rook is passive, babysitting a pawn. Uh, this knight is centralized, this knight is like in a weird square, uh, and doesn't really have a lot of good jumping points. Bishop is kind of weird and can be cut out with a move like bishop e3, so that his squares are like taken away. Um, I love this position, yeah, it seems cool. If I could get this in a game, I would maybe be pretty happy, I would say. Well, it depends, depends against who, yeah. Uh, if I'm playing someone I'm much uh, higher rated than, this, maybe there's not enough pieces on the board for me to be happy. But against someone that's, you know, about my strength, they may be stronger, like, yeah, give me this position every day of the week. Okay, uh, that's that. Let's get on to the next one. Yeah, before we go on, I, I did want to shout out to all the all the sports that's going on right now. I'm a big sports fan. Um, my, my main sport is the NBA. I watch a lot of basketball. Um, but recently, yeah, what Dallas sports have been kind of um, pretty good. I'm, I'm from the Dallas-Fort Worth area and um, the Dallas Stars are in the Stanley Cup Finals and they showed up big in game one. 
uh, giving the business to Tampa Bay and going up 1-0 in the series. Uh, I'm not a big hockey guy myself, but hey, if Dallas can win this uh, playoffs, then hey, like I'm, I'm all for it, yeah. And um, Dallas Cowboys today had a big, big game, second uh, second game of the season, and down huge against the Falcons at halftime, and came back with a wild, wild comeback. Um, yeah, they they really, really handed it to the Falcons. Falcons blew a big lead in the Super Bowl a couple years ago uh, against the Patriots, and this was like mm, almost as bad. Yeah, they were up 26 to 10, and Cowboys were uh, down two points with very little time, and they go for a super, super risky onside kick strategy and make it work. Oh man, like really, really special stuff. My my favorite sport is for sure got to be the basketball. Uh, I play a lot myself. I play mainly at like point guard type position. I was never big enough to do anything else, um, but I really do like those point guards that are electric in the league. Guys that um, you know can really score on you, uh, drop some sick dimes. Guys like Luca, like Steph Curry, Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker. Yeah, so I'm a big basketball guy. That's my that's my home home sport and. Uh, some sick stuff going on there as well with the Denver Nuggets playing the LA Lakers tonight. Let's see how that goes. My team to win it all from here is the Boston Celtics. Um, really hoping that they can uh, get get the business taken care of and make it to the finals at least. So we can get some Lakers-Celtics rivalry going on again. Yeah, and my favorite Dallas sports team is definitely the Mavs. Cowboys are like definitely uh, considered America's team and everyone raves about them, but... They always find a way to, to get me as a casual fan really interested and then they'll just disappoint me. I've been to maybe one or two Cowboys games in my life and uh, I think I watched them get eliminated uh, against the Seahawks so that was not fun. And yeah, I'm sure they'll find a way to do it again but for now, hey, we can revel in the fact that they pulled off an epic comeback and um, yeah, Falcons choked again. Cool. Uh, I will rant more about sports maybe some other time, but let's get right back to the, the preparation. Here we have another Rui Lopez. Another open Rui Lopez, looks like. No, it's not open, but it looks very similar to the last position. Um, and let's take a look at what's going on right now. We got um, a position where I would think Bishop C2 is nice to get back on this diagonal and maybe pester black. I feel like I've seen this exact position and Bishop C2 seems like the natural move that comes to my mind, which is why I'm drawn to it. What else could be nice? Rookie 1, A4, maybe H3 because this Bishop is still around. Yeah, definitely let me know what your favorite sports teams are too. If you guys follow sports at home, if you don't follow sports, then uh, that's fine too. But yeah, I'm going to talk a lot about sports. I love sports, so um, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna go Bishop C2 because I feel like I've seen this position and it's nice to get it on this diagonal. Okay, cool. My memory served me right and let's take a quick look how it comes about. Okay, so some Rui Lopez again. This is really hitting me with that double openings. First had a uh, back-to-back, what was it? Um, back-to-back -back openings in the Anglo, in the, fret, uh, the, the Dutch positions, I think. Um, yeah, okay, my memory is not that good apparently. I can't even remember what happened like 30 minutes ago, but here we have another double, a Rui Lopez double. Bishop a4, knight f6, castles. Oh, it is, it is an open Rui Lopez. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, this did seem like an open. All of this is, again, the most common moves in this position. I won't go too much into this because we've already seen it and, uh, already talked about it. Bishop e7 is not the most common move. Bishop c5 is a lot more common. But it's okay. Uh, or sorry, not a lot more common. It's just a little bit more common. Both are fine. And most common knight bd2. And castles. Also knight c5 is common. But let's just go down this route a little bit. Bishop c2. I think f5 is common here. Yep, f5. And let's go down this route a couple more moves. I think e takes f6. Very natural. You leave black with some loose pieces along this e-file. And if he captures back, let's just go down this route a little bit. Knight b3, and you're fighting for this square and also fighting for the dark square here. Uh, you want to keep black always weak on those squares because that's where you're strong right now. So keep at it. Bishop g4, looking to trade this weird piece. Uh, queen d3, 
Let's line something up over here. And knight e4. Knight b to d4. And I'll stop right here. This seems a little bit strange. Allowing c5 with tempo. But I guess it may not be good. Because we go jump in right knight d6. Knight c6. And black has not really accomplished a whole lot. But some interesting position. Yeah. And uh, at least we got the move right. So we know what to do if we see this position. Cool. Let's get on with the next one. Yeah. Please don't hit me with another ruler pass. Let's get some variety in here. Okay, we're white again. This is coming out of a d4 with some f3 thrown in. Very, very different position. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I'm really not sure what to say. f3 so early is extremely committal. Um, you're weakening this diagonal and you're walking into some queen check and... Um, yeah, lights out, but okay. If it's good, it's good. What to do, what to do. Um, materially, I am 7 pawns, he's got 7 pawns. Uh, 3 minor pieces to both of us. I have the bishop pair, he does not. So maybe I want to open up the position. But for now, I'm very, very underdeveloped, so I am not opening the position up just yet. No thank you. Um, moves that come to mind, e3. Just to babysit this pawn a little bit and start developing here. e4 is crazy, right? I don't want to... Yeah, I don't want to get wrecked in the center and then have my king exposed too. Um, yeah, then you'd walk into all this queen h4 business, castles, rook e8, like not fun at all. So I would guess e3, maybe there's like some really greedy thing you can do with takes here, but even then you're up a pawn, but your pawns are just Swiss cheese. Uh, I don't see it happening. So other, other moves to consider, bishop g5, just pestering this knight a bit. What else do we got? Um... Yeah, that's all I really see. Um, bishop g5 is so natural, yeah? You don't want to close your bishop in just yet. Maybe get him active. But then again, these points are weak. So you gotta keep him safe. I'll go e3. Cool. Nice, and the second most common move was in fact bishop g5. It's cool how you can kind of reason through these openings. Um, and people generally try to play things that make sense, right? So um, even if you're caught in a position where you don't know what it is that's going on, you don't have necessarily to rely on memory, but you can rely on intuition, which is really what I'm trying to get at with this whole drill. Build intuition in a lot more interesting and unique positions. Okay, d4, knight f6. This is the Nimzo Indian. So um, that basically is this set of moves here. It's called the Nimzo Indian. Very popular uh, at the top level as black. It's one of those openings that is has the seal of approval from like the super GMs. It's uh, it's a good opening. So bishop b4, f3, right here. Yeah, it's like the most fourth fourth most common move. Um, so not sure uh, if there's some other moves that we can consider. e3 is common. Queen c2 common. Um, okay, yeah, all makes sense. But let's go with this f3 stuff. Yeah, I'm glad it, it all makes sense to you too after some thought. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely something that I want to yeah encourage that it's not... Openings is not just about memorization and uh, remembering like 20 moves down some road. Sometimes it is, you know, especially in the depth training, but it's just about building intuition in a lot of positions and being comfortable at the board when you're faced with something that you don't know. Okay, F3. Yo, this music got crazy. It got... Uh, like dubstep type stuff like ultra dubstep okay let's get on with it takes a3 common yep common it's annoying to be bothered by a bishop here for so long so let's clarify it and c5 very aggressive move but it has a point that we create the swiss cheese type thing after takes takes and now okay so knight takes d5 is more common Put questions here and then here you have to actually create swiss cheese uh okay very interesting this would not be my my first uh my first thought in this position what is wrong with knight takes and this is an annoying pin maybe okay so interesting he is forced to kind of do something else and then you can give up this pawn but what is the point exactly Bishop king f2 okay okay i'll go as far as this and maybe also look at the more common move here, which is castles. Queen b3. Um, okay, that sounds good. This is 
pretty natural position. I'm underdeveloped, but I uh, I feel like I'm up a pawn, unless I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm up a pawn, which is this pawn, and he's defended. And I can get developed quick. Maybe I'll give up this pawn if I have to. But what about the C takes line? Sorry, E takes. E3. And what's the story? Castles. Yo, the music really, really amped up, yeah? Music is like really poppin'. Um, yeah, not sure what's up, but. Yeah, if our theory about crazy positions and the music suiting the position is accurate, it seems about right. Like, this position is kind of crazy, having played f3 so early and leaving your king vulnerable, but I wouldn't say it's like this crazy. This is just next level, right? On another planet. Okay, cool. Let's take a couple look, couple uh, more moves in this. b6 and knight e2. Bishop a6, trading off this bishop, which is hemmed in by his own pawns, so it makes sense. And just castle and... Yeah, okay, pretty reasonable position. All the pieces are out for both sides. White has a slightly nicer center with um, two central pawns to one, but nothing so bad. Yeah, I think both both sides are pretty happy with the opening here. Okay, hmm, I'm taking this one. This one's a good vibe. All right, next position. All right, let's try to figure out what's going on in this mess right here on the board. We've got a Pertz opening Austrian attack. So very, very unconventional first move with d6 in response to e4. Um, yeah, okay. Basically saying take the center if you want. We'll look at it in a minute, but right now we got this position. Uh, and what's the situation? We are playing as black with seven pawns. And they got eight pawns. Uh, so I think we just want to win this pawn back. Nothing else really makes a lot of sense. Allowing captures here with um, a destroyed pawn structure and being down a pawn makes no sense. So question is, do we want to take with the pawn or the queen? I want to go queen because then we can give this with check and also keep our pawn structure uh, in a way that makes a little bit more sense. It just feels weird having a pawn here and allowing e5. Uh, so let's go for it. No hesitation. Yep, only move ever played. If you ever play something else, you'd be the first. So by all means, go find some novelty. But we're not going to be the ones to do it here because uh, it just doesn't make sense. Okay, let's take a look. We're playing as black. This music is really trippy. It sounds like it's uh, cracking up on me, but it's it's not. It's really not. It's just, yeah, just the way it's designed. Knight f6, knight c3. I used to like a lot of this like house and dubstep type stuff in, back in the day. And then I got more into like the pop culture, like rap and hip hop and all that stuff. But this is a pretty cool genre. I like this stuff. It's very like ambient, like, ambient type music that you can just listen to mindlessly while playing and you get into a flow state and everything's good f4 most common move that's committal yeah i would think knight f3 maybe is is good um but what else we got f4 yeah it feels like we're branching off a little too early so let's keep a look at f4 my favorite rapper um you know i gotta say in terms of body of work and the songs that i liked the songs that show up on my like Spotify, uh, like your songs of 2020 or whatever, um, probably Drake. But in terms of my favorite ever song in the rap genre, it's got to be Lose Yourself by Eminem. So Eminem is definitely up there, up there with Drake. Um, hopefully it's not too basic, but Drake's also got the whole like basketball vibe. He's chilling with Steph Curry. He's chilling with the Toronto Raptors always at the game. So. He's got that whole like pop culture times, um, yeah, times sports thing going on, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I feel like Toronto was uh, like 
it was almost as if Drake was playing for the Toronto Raptors in last year's NBA Finals. He was just like always there, so energized, helping those guys out. So, yeah, glad to see that he got something out of that, even though I was rooting for the, the Warriors for sure. Drake's got some sick flows for sure. He sound, His voice is like, it's not even fair. He's, he sounds like he's auto-tuned, yeah? He sounds like he he's auto-tuned by, by uh, like just his natural voice. And um, yeah, that's just not fair to everyone else out there. Come on. F4, Bishop G7. What do we got? Knight F3, common move, yes. Castles, all of this seems natural. Natural moves just getting de developed early on. Bishop E2. Uh, okay, Bishop D3, a little bit more common. Uh, I don't really see the point. You're kind of anyway blunted along this diagonal, so might as well keep it on a slightly safer square where you can watch over this pawn with the queen as well. Uh, but okay. Anyways, this is the route we go down in the game. Takes. Queen A5. And why not take here? That's really crazy to me. Is there something I'm missing? Lee Knight takes e4. Okay. Yeah, tactically this works out where black is uh, just in time to create some attack here. And white is not yet castled, so there's some interesting stuff going on here. Um, okay, so yeah. The, this was a pretty interesting one. By the way, welcome in. I see a lot of uh, new viewers in the in the chat. Uh, Really excited to be doing this. I'm a, I'm a live streamer focused on improving at chess. And today I have some sick setup with some new hardware, some new uh, webcam as well, and microphone. And I'm going to be doing opening training today. Um, so just basically have this tool open, which throws a random position at me. And I just got to do my best to try to figure out what's going on and what is the most common move in the position. And yeah, just help me kind of develop a flair for the game and um, also, just some openings that I can try out in Blitz next time around. Um, I do want to keep my Blitz sessions very focused on uh, trying new things, just experimenting, and hopefully this can be that. So let me know if you guys are uh, similarly on the, the chess improvement train and what you guys to do to get better, or if you guys are just you know degenerates playing Blitz all the time, that's cool too. Let me know, hit me up. I'll definitely do some um, yeah, simuls against you guys sometime, and um, let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts. Cool. Let's get on to the next position. All right, we got black again. This time in the Scandi. Scandi is one of those openings that's like super dubious at the top level. But um, yeah, every once in a while you see it and it's kind of cool. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I am a little bit chicken sometimes too at Blitz, just playing the same openings over and over. Uh, sometimes it's good. You can build really good knowledge in that specific opening, but hey, I mean, it's Blitz, right? If you're not going to try stuff out in Blitz, you're never going to try stuff out. So um, better to try it out in Blitz than in a slow game, and also better to try it out here than in a Blitz game as well. So you have a flair for the game. Okay, e4, d5, e takes, knight f6, c4. What do we got going on? Um, I think I want to break at the center. This is slightly annoying, very menacing structure. So maybe something like c6, and if he takes, I can develop my knight with tempo. Maybe e6, and if he takes, I develop my bishop with tempo. Both of them seem natural. Everything else seems kind of like whack. Maybe g6, perhaps. Uh, get the bishop here and castled. Um, yeah, nothing else really is shouting out to me. So it's one of these three pawn moves, g6, e6, c6. Maybe they're all three of the most common moves. Um, perhaps bishop like f5 or something could be reasonable too because this pawn is no longer here and we can develop it but as I'm saying that I'm seeing queen could come here and maybe pester the b7 point I'm not really seeing it not feeling it um, c6 seems so natural but if takes knight takes d4 e6 perhaps yeah it seems very reasonable seems like we want mm, one of these two moves. G6 seems like it's not addressing the main point of the position, so we can rule that out for now. What to do? I feel like it's a shot in the dark. They could be very, they could both be very common moves. Somehow it feels like developing this knight is more of a important point than developing this bishop. This bishop could go other places too, so let's play C6. Nice, nice. Yeah, like my intuition was spot on here. Um, I've played a few games on the white side of this position, not on the black, I've almost never played Scandi. But um, yeah, chipping away at the center is, seems like the, the thing to do. So let's get started. What we got? We got e4, d5, the Scandinavian defense, and it's dubious at the top level because you can get kicked around a bunch. 
you can go queen here, queen here, uh, queen here. Basically every move with this queen is possible. And bringing a queen out at this level, um, sorry, at this early point in the game, at the highest level is seen as like, mm, almost like an insult to your opponent. Like, do whatever, you, do your worst. Like, I'll give you an opening advantage. Like, doesn't matter at all, I'll play you from there on. Um, but it, I mean, it's not like it loses immediately. So it's legit, yeah, for surprise value and um, I think there's maybe a few people who play it at the highest level make a living off of it, but yeah, uh, I certainly not an opening that I'm like ever super scared to face. You know, I have some natural developing moves that um, will give me a good position, so I'm okay with it. But okay, for the purposes of this breath exercise, let's do knight f6, um, c4, and chipping away right here, c6. So if, what's the most common move? d4, yeah, just basically saying, okay, I'm ready to give up this pawn again. And what happens? You just develop and maybe e6. Yep, knight f3. And I'll stop after maybe one or two more moves. Bishop b4, takes, knight takes. And here we are at a position. Uh, yeah, black is one step away from castling. Can't really say that any piece feels awkwardly placed. Everything seems natural. Um, yeah, white can say the same thing. Natural development. Only thing is this central pawn is weak. It's a liability, what we call an IQP in the business, uh, isolated queen, queen's pawn, and it is a vulnerability. It's something that black can play against, and white can use uh, the strengths generated by this to drive the position, use the squares that it uh, gives it outposts, and play around it. Uh, also, maybe play for a break in this position, get rid of the weakness, but the play is very much in this position, I think, dictated around this IQP, which is uh, a very positional game as opposed to a lot of the Scandinavian positions that arise out of um, here if after e takes d5, queen takes d5, things just go haywire and just absolutely bonkers. Whereas in this knight f6, it's a little bit more measured and calculated. So uh, I, I can definitely play this in, in my games as well. All right, what's up with the music? I'm not hearing anything right now. Okay, it's just some weird uh, outro of this song. It's just quiet all of a sudden. Okay, let's just go on. Okay. Cool. If you were wondering what this is, by the way, this is called Pretzel Rocks. It's a uh, license-free music player. I usually listen to stuff on Spotify, but um, this is license-free stuff that I can use on live streams. All right, what's up with this music? I cannot hear it. Um, it's not playing. Is there some issue with the Pretzel Rock servers? Uh, maybe try a different playlist altogether. Let's try... Mixed. Yeah, not sure what's up with the music. Uh, Pretzel Rock seems to be having some issues. Let's just give it a, a quick go. If it's not working, we're gonna have to cut our losses and um, and move on. It sounds like it's stuck on a loop. What? All right, um, if it's really bothering you, I can, uh, let me just mute the, the, the computer's audio for now. Yeah, that's, sorry about that. I, I hope it's not too annoying, um, but I can try to get it working on my end, maybe listen to some music while I'm playing, and then in a bit, I can play it back for you. It seems like it's an issue on um, on the the web apps, uh, the, the web app, Pretzel Rocks. Um, so let's just play something random. I don't know, maybe Epic. Okay, I'm not hearing anything, so maybe we're gonna have to go uh, music free for a bit. Hopefully it doesn't kill the vibe, but we can just go on with the with the games itself. Um, also, yeah, also I won't have to worry about any like random uh, like, takedowns or anything if I uh, ha have any issues, but okay, let's go on New next position. Um, again, we're black. I feel like we're getting handed too many blacks, but okay. Um, this is also a Sicilian. Unfortunately, no music is the worst kind of music for a Sicilian. You want extremely upbeat stuff. It's the most fighting openings out there, fighting of openings out there, so um Okay, unfortunate, but okay, whatever. Let's go on. Uh, this is in the Nydorf, which is extremely popular, maybe one of the most popular openings out there, I would say in the top uh, two or three openings out there um, against E4. So this is the real deal. And what do we got? We got a burn attack, English attack, meaning white is throwing a bunch of pawns down here in your, in your face. So what do we got right now? We have seven pawns to white's seven as well if i can count um maybe i cannot but okay um they have two knights we have two bishops uh centrally placed mind you um staring down 
uh, on the, the king side where white is castled. Also, white has some flexibility with this bishop where he wants to go. He can maybe develop it to an active post here or come out this way and maybe pester this rook. What else do we have? We have... By the way, is the issue with the, the music stuck on a loop gone? I kind of muted the... Um, the background music so it shouldn't be playing at all for you if it's still on a loop something is seriously wrong but let me know in the chat yeah um definitely don't want it to be a breaking experience for you as a viewer okay awesome cool glad it's muted now um yeah i'll get back to it in a bit i think there's some issue with pretzel rocks itself so i'll just let it try to sort itself out okay um as for the position there's a lot of tension here this guy is literally just one step away from bothering my bishop and i have to give him up for this night um, is it something I'm so unhappy about? Maybe not. Um, maybe not because I can then have a hook to work against a5, a4 and start to break down this king side and try to, sorry, it's not king side. It's actually queen side because he's castled on the queen side and try to mate him. Um, but what do we got? Um, yeah, my candidate moves here. Maybe bishop takes the knight. And if he takes back, then we have the hook to work against. Uh, this is unprovoked, of course. You can... Uh, it's kind of like a prophylactic move. You get this bishop out of the way, so fi doesn't hit with the tempo, which is always nice if you can make a move in preparation of an opponent's move and fighting their plan. Uh, also comes to mind is this pawn is draw is is attacked and not defended right now, so a5 is a natural move that comes to mind. We're also menacing some a4 brick, and perhaps if he plays f5, we can even just ignore everything and play a4. Um, and if he takes, I take the knight, and if he tries to take another piece. Well, then I take here with the pawn and I'm queening and he's not going to be able to stop it and he's also going to get mated. So, um, yeah, a5 is a very, very flexible move. I think it's uh, really like in the spirit of position, like, let's just go, let's fight. Um, I'm going to start attacking you. You try to attack me, but whatever. I'm just going to go straight in for the kill. Um, what else can we do? d5 is kind of a natural move in a lot of Sicilians because you defend this pawn with this bishop um, and you also break at white center. This makes some sense um, in the position. Um, all of this being said, I'm just so naturally drawn to a5. It just seems like the move to play and really just, you know, ask white what he wants to do because knight, uh, this knight is really going to have a hard time finding, uh, some good safe squares. This is cut off. This is cut off. Going to a1, if you're really doing that, then mm, you're putting another piece in the way of your king and everything's so muddled up there and you can just maybe expect to get mated. Um, so, okay, let's do it. What? I didn't mean to click that, but okay. I meant to click a5. Um, it just, yeah, I just accidentally clicked this. That's the worst. Yeah, at least it doesn't happen in a blitz game or like some serious tournament, online tournament or something. But um, yeah, I meant to play a5. You guys can back me up here. You guys were on the chat. Uh, oh, sorry, we're on the stream listening to me. Rook a7 is the most, you know, who would play this? If, um, yeah, if you ever played this, you're definitely like, uh, just starting out with chess because you can take it immediately and you haven't accomplished anything. You've just given up a rook for nothing and all your attacking potential is down the drain. So, okay. Um, yeah, a bit silly, but okay. Let's see. What did this come out of? E4, C5. Um, what do we got? Knight F3, D6, D4, C takes, Knight takes, Knight F6, Knight C3, A6, Nidorf. This is Nidorf, uh chess with the A6 move extremely sharp extremely fighting and one of the top openings as i mentioned so um yeah if you're looking for something to add to your black repertoire this is uh, something that will stand the test of time and will um you know give you some interesting fighting chess this is definitely one to take a look at um, okay bishop e3 this is a restrained approach the most uh, aggressive of openings would be like bishop g5 um or yeah, something like f3, preparing g4, etc. But as we can tell here, it did it did escalate super quickly. Um, with some bishop e3, what do we got? We have e5, asking this knight what it wants to do. I think it went to b3. Yep, that's the natural place for it to go. Um, just to keep it around. Knight f3 is also very reasonable. Um, yeah, they're both common, but uh, just keeps a little bit more uh, harmony in the position than going back to e2 or, say, giving yourself up over here on f5. It seems a little too hasty to be doing that. So knight, F, knight b3 is it is in this position. Um, and what do we have? We have bishop e6, f3, common move. Yeah, we're preparing for some English attack with g4 uh, and some, some pawn storm over here uh, trying to mate us. Um, 
I think b7, bishop e7 here, um, queen d2, getting ready to castle this way. If you're going to start an attack here, you don't want to be castled there. You want to be castled on the other side. Um, here we castle, naturally, castle. Knight b to d7, okay, all of this is pretty natural. Just get on with development. g4, menacing some g5 attack, and we just get on with our own attack, saying, haha, okay, if you play g5, I can meet it with b4, which is super crazy, because does it not seem like you can just take here? And now you're threatening this, but okay, once you take here, you're also attacking the queen, and if he takes, then knight can take here, and we have resolved the harmony in our position. This knight is now... Uh, not biting on another, biting on a rock with another knight staring at it in the face. Could maybe play for a d5 break. All these files are open here, and we can play for some attack. Uh, meanwhile, it doesn't feel like white can really generate the pawn break that they need to to win something over here, like to break some lines open. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this, but yeah, results are definitely still in white's favor. Um, but sorry, let's just go back to the actual line in the game. G5, b4. Um, and in this one, we go for knight e2. Just moving the knight away makes sense. Uh, then knight e8, because now our knight was attacked, we just get it out of the way. It's a safer square here than over here. It might seem extremely passive, but it does have some plan back into the game with knight c7 and um, onwards. But what else do we got? We got f4. Okay, really asking the question to our bishop, and we say a5. Okay, so if he plays f5, my instinct is to play a4 and just go haywire yep that is the move um and if he takes this is the line what we calculated a takes b3 and yeah if he takes here it, he would be lost i think if the the computer shows up i think he would we would just take here and we would be winning 100 percent. we don't even need to wait for the evaluation because there's no way for him to stop this from becoming a queen he can get a queen as well but we'll be able to capture it in one move um okay so f takes e6 a takes b3 e takes f7 with check so that's why this is the the main move you take it with check so there's no time for taking here rook takes and now we deal with this threat over here so king b1 wow this is really just saying take it do your worst um but really this pawn is a shield for him so he will be okay he's not gonna get checkmated just yet um pretty cool stuff yeah i mean very very attacking and glad my instincts with you attack me i attack you it's all good um mindset kind of worked in this one so um, okay, definitely an interesting one. And okay, let's give this music one more chance, maybe. Um, let's see if it's working. Hmm, it's just not playing music. Uh, seems like something is wrong with the site. Yeah, if you're watching other streamers too, then I'm sure they're running into similar issues if they're using pretzel rocks. But yeah, not working over here. It doesn't look like it's specific to any playlist. It's just not can tell it's not starting up so okay uh no music it is let's do a couple more and then i'm gonna wrap up a little, maybe like 20 minutes or so um yeah i'm pretty hungry so definitely want to eat something it's a little bit late here um but let's get right to the next one let's get into a queen's gambit declined semi slav moran bloomfeld blumenfeld variation yeah hit someone with this and uh tell them you uh, Ask them how you sound. Uh, you definitely will sound pretentious saying this, but hey, I mean, uh, it is what it is, right? You got to specify what this opening is, and this is what it is. Um, okay, let's take a look at it. Right now, in this position, it's a route. It's a a rose out of a d4 d5 opening. So, um, some queen's pawn opening. Uh, it's called queen's pawn because you're moving the pawn in front of your queen. Um, okay, d4 d5 c4 c6 yada yada yada, and here we are at this position. Uh, I have five pawns, and they have six pawns, so I'm down a pawn. They have two rooks, I have two rooks, I have two bishops, they have two bishops, we both have a knight, we both have a queen. Okay, so no material imbalances, that's always the first thing I check. What if I take this? I is it okay? Um, I'm down a pawn, so I can just win this pawn back, and if he plays knight c5 to attack this, I cannot move my knight because he'll take it, but I can uh, play an intermediate move where I take this pawn here, with check. So it might be okay. Um, now, as I'm saying all this, I do also have this move, bishop takes b5, but he can play queen a5, and that's a check, so don't want to do that. I'd be, um, yeah, I'd be home in maybe 10 minutes after that game. Um, castles, maybe just get on with life and say, whatever, like, I'm just going to develop and do your worst. Uh, you're up a pawn, but what is that pawn? 
um, is it really felt you're not castled yet but like I said castles maybe run into rook g8 you're running into some attack bishop b7 and everything is menacing maybe maybe there's no reason to commit so early and maybe we should just uh, be a little greedy win this pawn because if we do castle they can also play e5 and defend this pawn and this structure with this f6 e5 d4 pawn structure seems like we're never really going to get that pawn back anytime soon so um, I will say that we can castles and if e5 bishop takes here but then yeah I'm still not attracted to it because of the reasons uh, I mentioned earlier with rook g8 bishop b7 and it doesn't feel like my king is very safe so let's start with knight takes d4 um, and hopefully that's the right move Okay, so it is a common, second most common move, but it's not a, not a good uh, move in terms of its results. Very, very low win percentage for white. So let's just take a quick look at what, a, uh, what moves led us to this position. It is something that looks extremely sharp, extremely dynamic position. Coming out of a d4 opening, it's um, yeah a little bit more rare to see dynamism coming out of d4 openings, but okay. Um, how do we get here? Knight c3, knight f6, and e3. Pretty interesting for sure. Yeah, definitely um, an interesting opening. A lot of weird stuff, a lot of imbalances. Yeah, if you look at a position and the key thing, like you might wonder like what makes a chess player say um, this position is interesting versus this position is boring. It is the imbalances. It is uh, the fact that I have uh, a different pawn structure than them. They have this open file to work with, whereas I don't. I have this file instead to work with. Um, pawn structure is crazy chaotic like a lot of weird pawn structure uh, like sorry a lot of weird uh, things about the pawn structure this pawn is hanging around loose here these pawns are doubled uh, there's some attacking chances with these bishops staring down on the king side king hasn't declared its intention we don't know where its address is it could go this way it could go this way it could stay in the center um, same over here I could go this way seems crazy to go the other way but maybe I'll keep him in the center but okay, um, this is the position, and e3, um, yeah, it's crazy. This also comes 12 moves out of the opening. This looks like some end game almost. It looks like there's you know so few pieces left, but it's just the appearance because all these pawns are gone, and all the pieces have so much range in this position. Okay, e3, uh, what do we got? We got e6, knight f3, all this is common, so... I'm not going to comment too much here. This is all natural development. Knight b to d7, bishop d3, queen c2 also seen sometimes, but this makes sense. Basically, we are now taking here as black because now we can uh, say, haha, you wasted a tempo to bring your bishop here, and now you have to take here. Uh, this is a desirable thing to do for black because now we can start, start our pawns on the queen side moving and play for some c5 type break, and all of our pieces are harmonious. This bishop will come to this beautiful diagonal and life's good, yeah, but results-wise, white is still doing uh, pretty nice in these positions. I definitely have a good bit of experience playing the black side here, um, but yeah, I mean, white is white is definitely slightly in the driver's seat in this position. Okay, um, so these are the most common moves, uh, and they are played. E5, C takes, and oh boy, we hit him with something crazy here. Knight takes here. Um, it looks crazy because we're sacrificing a knight for a pawn, but also we are having this threat here So it's not the end of the world and it ends up just kind of simplifying a little bit and here there are a couple options There's g takes, but I'm surprised knight f6 or queen takes f6 are not commonly played moves um, Why what's wrong with queen takes maybe bishop g5 and Okay, bye bye queen um, Yeah, it looks looks horrible. This queen is trapped. It's a really funny a variation um, so don't fall for that if you're on the black side here. Uh, knight takes, what do we got? Um, no moves played here. No moves, uh, no no games ever played with this. I guess it's because bishop takes b5 is with a check. And so it gains in strength. But yeah, I think that's enough of a reason to say, okay, we're not going to play it, take this way. We do get some dynamic opportunities here. Yeah, generally you're weakening your own king with such a move, but... You also create your own attacking potentials, put white in some squirmy situation. So yeah, you can't get all of this without taking some risk yourself. Um, castles is most common here. Uh, what happens if he does execute on e5 maybe to keep this pawn safe? Maybe we take on b5 here and say, all good. We win that pawn now. Yeah, okay. That's basically it according to this engine. What else do we have? Um, queen b6 here. 
is most common. What about rook g8? I guess right now it's hanging a pawn to bishop takes h7. And then the bishop could backtrack to e4, put some pressure here. And then we've basically said you cannot castle either way. You're probably losing. So, okay. That's enough of a reason to turn that down. What is the most common move? Queen b6. Oh, sorry, after castles, queen b6. And queen e2. Let's just go down this road a bit before this pawn was attacked. So we defend it. It's a nice pawn to keep around because now we can also uh, just kind of cramp white's queen side a little bit. And rook d1. And bishop c5. And I'll stop here. This pawn is defended several times now. And... Uh, okay, I, I shouldn't stop actually. I want to see where this king goes in some of the main lines. Bishop e7, bishop e4, bishop a6, queen d2, rook d8. Maybe the king just says, okay, I'm going to tuck myself in. Cozy right here. I am surrounded by a blanket of pawns, so yeah, do your worst. You're not going to mate me. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop here. Um, definitely some interesting dynamic position where I think the dynamism was generated by this g takes f6 move which led to some, um, yeah, sharp play. Okay, I'll do, let's say I'll do two more. You know my, my philosophy, if you've watched some of my other streams, I don't like to leave on a lost, uh, a missed position or a missed basket if I'm playing basketball. Um, I'm going to get one right, and then I'm going to leave. Hopefully it's the next, uh, yeah, hopefully it's the next to next one I'll get right, but if not, then I'll do one more. Okay, um... Let's reset this guy. We are in now in another Queen's uh, Queen's Indian, Queen's Pawn opening with uh, the white pieces again. Okay, so black has played this knight e4, which is menacing some knight takes here. And um, yeah, not too worried about it. I, I think I can get ready to castle immediately. Knight takes, bishop takes would be... Mm, I don't know what we've accomplished. We can maybe now not, not even look to play Queen c2 because we have lured the bishop to a better square. So... Really not seeing it. Maybe there's something with this knight moving and exploiting here, but no, because he can just take this with attack on my queen, and uh, I don't really see the point. So I'm pretty quickly drawn to castles. Queen c2 also speaks to me, and um, it says that this knight, uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to take me? Are you going to drop back? Are you going to drop back this way? All of them seem slightly weird, but okay, my two, two main candidate moves here are queen c2 and castles. Um... Not sure what's up with that. Uh, by the way, welcome in if you're if you're just joining. Uh, welcome into my stream. I'm focused on improving chess and getting better. And today I'm focused on uh, opening training. I have this tool that uh, gives me a random opening position, and I have to guess the most common move in that position. And the goal is to develop some openings that I can play in blitz, and also just to get a flair for the game. And um, yeah, try to try to broaden my opening expertise so here we go uh i'm gonna go castles it just seems more natural to get developed and queen could maybe go somewhere else in the future okay so not the most common move played and bishop d2 i would never have guessed this this may be the last move i would have guessed because you're putting it on a square where he can get a knight for a bishop exchange um which seems slightly strange um so okay um I did lose all the all the the moves in the position, so um, yeah. Let's see if we can go back and get it. Hopefully, this takes me back to this position. Okay, it didn't. I'm just gonna cut my losses and say let's go on to the very last position that we we're looking at. Uh, if I get it right, that is. If I get it wrong, I'm gonna stick around for another one. I don't like to leave uh, on a on a on a sour note. I'm gonna try to get one right and then uh, hop off. But here we have another Sicilian. Love Sicilian positions. They're super exciting. And we have some gambit called the Smith Moore gambit, which is e4, c5, d4. Um, and after takes, you play c3 to get some play. Um, knight f6 is definitely challenging. I feel like we can lead into some, transpose into something called the Alapin variation with e5, knight d5, and c takes. So that would be my first move to consider. For right now, he is attacking this pawn. So maybe something like bishop d3 is common or queen c2. Uh, we don't have this nice square for my knight to jump to and protect it. Also, knight b to d2, uh, sorry, knight to d2 is bad because he can take here and ruin our pawn structure, and we can't capture back with the knight in that case. Mm, I feel like e5's got to be the move. Uh, after he moves, I can take, and I have some alapin type position. Let's try it. Okay, it is the most common move. So let's just take a quick look at what's up with this. e4, we got c5, 
Smith Mora Gambit on the board. Super sharp stuff. If you're looking for some surprise weapons in the Sicilian, check this out. Uh, Smith Mora was something I was kind of scared of for a long time, but um, it's really not that scary, especially if you know that in some of the main lines, you can get right into Alapin territory, which is, um, yeah, much more common, much more, uh, you know, like restrained. And you know what's going on as opposed to just chaos on the board because black has done something that you have no idea what's going on. But okay, C3 and most common move is actually D takes C3. So that is interesting. Knight takes. And what do we say? We say if you develop, we're just going to continue to develop ourselves and say, what do we have for the pawn? Honestly, not that much. But we do have slightly faster development. Um, black is several moves from castling. One, two, three, four moves. And we're just two moves. So there's something we can play against. We can also uh, target this pawn with some bishop c4 stuff. He can defend it, of course. But then yada, yada, yada. The story goes on. And um, yeah, there is just some dynamism created by this pawn sacrifice. White gets decent results in these, these positions, um, as you can tell from the opening explorer. But in this one, he didn't immediately take on c3 he played this knight f6 move instead which allows us to get right into this alapin territory with e5 knight d5 and uh, knight f3 is the most common move because he cannot take here uh, if he does we just take ourselves so he's got to just develop and then see if he makes this blunder we give him a chance to to, to to mess up and if he doesn't then we just take here and we say okay we have a nice center you have some awkward looking pieces um, I have played a lot of games on the black side of this position, a few games on the white side of this position, but um, yeah, uh, not a ton of experience. Basically, this pawn structure is extremely favorable for some attack over here on the king side. They're, if you will, pointed towards the king side. So we just like put the pieces on squares that point towards the king side, and it's all, uh, you know, it's all favoring that type of attack because of the pawn structure. So something to keep in mind. But. Um, as for the Alapin, the way that it could come about, um, we can get to this exact same position with e4, c5, c3, knight f6, e5, knight d5, d4, takes, knight f3, and after knight c6, c takes d4, and we're in that exact same position. This is a more common move order, I would say, to get to that same position, but uh, nonetheless, we are at the same point. So. Uh, transpositions and openings are, you know, a mess to wrap your head around. That is something that I am still working out how to how to figure it out. But um, yeah, anyway, it's just a good thing to keep in mind that there is a transposition in the position. So yeah, that should just about wrap it up for today. Uh, pretty excited with all this new equipment. I sound um, a lot better at least in the like test streams that I did. So uh, hopefully the quality of the stream today was was top notch and. Uh, really excited to be sharing a new area of chess that I'm working on, which is openings. Um, showed you a bunch of other stuff, but this is um, some hard-hitting stuff with, with opening preparation and concrete tools to help you prepare, right? You can literally, after doing this a bunch of times, you can uh, go back and look at yourself, say, I got this right X times out of Y today, and maybe that number is like 70% today, and you can shoot for some improvement over time. You can um, do it like I do, where you talk through everything and really go methodically about it, or you can just do these rapidly and play just off of intuition. And you know, the more you do this, the better your intuition will get. And um, you can also experiment with this in Blitz, and your intuition will get even better from that as well. But um, yeah, breadth and opening theory, I think, is something that's extremely necessary so that you're not able to be targeted exactly for. Like, people won't exactly know what you play, and they can expect that you will surprise them. They will expect to be... Um, they will expect for the unexpected, I guess. Um, but yeah, that should just about wrap it up for today. Pretty excited about um, everything. And um, thanks for everyone for, uh, for for checking me out on, on Twitch. And um, also, I'll, I'll be posting this on YouTube for sure. So um, thanks, y'all. And peace. That's it for me.